Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. On today's podcast, Jenny Smith and I will be talking about Givoke Hypopen. We'll go over the construction of the device, its operation, where on the body you can use Givoke Hypopen. We'll also talk about when to start thinking about using glucagon. We'll talk about the people in your life that you should tell about your diabetes and see if they'd be willing to help you in an emergency. And if you should have to use Givoke Hypopen, what do you do next? All of that and more on this episode of the Juice Box Podcast. Givoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is a premixed auto-injector of glucagon for treatment of very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages 2 and above. Find out more. Go to givoglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Givoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit givoglucagon.com slash risk. Before we get started today, I would like to tell you that Xeris has paid the host of this podcast, that's me, Scott Benner, and his guest, Jennifer Smith, a fee to create this content. Hey, Jenny, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Scott? Good, thank you. I appreciate you doing this with me today. Of course. I have to say a couple of things here. We don't usually do this together, but... Nothing that is said here constitutes advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult with a healthcare professional before making changes to a healthcare plan. Okay? Jenny, you're never here for that part. I'm not. Usually, I'm assuming you just add that in at some point, right? That is what happens. Givoke is a prescription injection for the treatment of very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages 2 and above. Do not use if you have a specific type of adrenal or pancreatic tumor, starvation, chronic low blood sugar, or allergy to Givoke. High blood pressure, hypoglycemia, and serious skin rashes can occur. Call your doctor or get medical help right away if you have a serious allergic reaction including rash, difficulty breathing, or low blood pressure. Visit givoglucagon.com slash risk for more information. So I know you know this, but a lot of people listening might not know that on December 31st, 2022, after decades on the market, Eli Lilly and company is discontinuing distribution of their glucagon emergency kit. Yes, they are. So we're talking about the, I mean, the one everybody must have, right? The little red kit with the powder in it and you, you put, yep. what do you do? Absolutely. The, the old time I've had many, many of them over the years and all of them have gone in the garbage as of the expiration that's on the package. And then I just refill it. (laughs) We used to give them to Arden school so the nurses could practice with them. That's a great idea. Yeah. Having said that, a lot of that's not necessary anymore because there have been a lot of innovations in the glucagon market. For instance, Givo Kypo pen, where I'm holding the pen right now. I have a trainer pen. It's not the actual one. I know you have it too. I do. This thing is super simple in terms of administration. So we're going to go over how it works in just a minute. It's a pre-mixed and ready-to-use glucagon option that has a reliable method of delivering during critical moments of severe hypoglycemia. So now, because the glucagon emergency kit has been discontinued, people who have that Eli Lilly GEK prescription will need to be prescribed a different option. Yes. You should talk to your healthcare provider about your options. But we're here today to talk about Givoke Hypopen because I think it's a terrific option. It is the glucagon that my daughter carries. Yes. It's also one that I have um, in the cupboard and multiple other places in my home. Uh, I travel with it, so it's great. You have it in your on your person when you leave the house? I do, yeah. yes. Okay. Arden does as well, and I have to say that this is the first time in, I don't know how long, 14 or 15 years of diabetes that Arden's actually been able to travel with glucagon because of Givokypopen's simple two-step administration. Givokypopen is designed for trained and untrained individuals to successfully use in emergency situations. People can even self-administer Givok in certain situations. It allows diabetics and their loved ones to treat severe, low blood sugar emergencies with confidence. Givokypopen is a ready-to-use rescue pen that everyone on insulin would benefit from. Givok shouldn't be used in patients with pheochromocytoma or insulinoma. Visit givoglucagon.com slash risk. It's going to seem like I read that, and I probably did, but I actually mean it. Seriously, um, 
we're going to talk about the build of the pen, mm-hmm. how it's used, which maybe couldn't be, I mean, like I said, two steps. There's not a lot to talk about. No, it's very simple. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually going to talk about where you can use it on the body and a lot else. So you have your pen in front of you? I, yes, it's actually just underneath my desk here. Let me grab it. <laughs> what else is under your desk? Well, you know, I have a riser desk with a treadmill underneath it. So I have, you know, a desk space underneath to be able to pull out multiple things while I'm talking to people. Look at you prepared. Um, and educating. Well, you know, you have to be right. Otherwise, I'm like, I have to run out of the room for yeah. this, right? That's not helpful. No. So you have yours. I have mine. Yep. These are trainer pens. They're not real, but they're, you know, a facsimile of what you'll get when you use Givo Kypo pen. So, I mean, it's about the length of a pen. And mm-hmm. the width of a, I don't know, a tiny cigar, maybe, um, you know, I'm a half inch, maybe around there's I'd actually say simply, it's kind of about the size of an insulin pen, honestly, like, you know, the barrel of it mm-hmm. seems to be about like, and in terms of a pen size, you're right. It's like a thick marker almost. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. It's like a, it's like a marker size. Mm-hmm. There's a window on it so that you can see after the glucagon has been administered. I'm looking at Jenny holding it up and a red <laughs> cap on the end. So yep. it is cap off, then you see this yellow end to it. You find a place on the body to use the pen. Now, here's where you can use it. On the front, abdomen left and right under your belly button. Yes. Tops of your thighs and upper arms. Press down. The window gets red once it's done administering, and that's it. It's in. That's Correct. pretty great. I, l- I love the fact that you can also hear... Um, the clicks Yeah, as it's working, right? You pull the red cap off, like you said, put it in the location mm-hmm. and you hear the click and that's, it's a great way. And then I love the viewing window, mm-hmm. the fact that you can actually see when it's completely um, red and done. It's, it's wonderful to know that it was completely dosed. And then of course, counting to five, um, once you see that is the next kind of important step, right? Right. Well, I have to say, the minute I saw it, I thought, well, my daughter can finally carry glucagon with her. Yes. And I mean, I don't know how it's been for other people, but it was hard to find people in her life to train to use glucagon. And now it's, I mean, its it just couldn't be easier. We, uh, Arden just moved into college, and we got her roommates together at a lunch and went over all of this. Not one confused face. Nobody was like, wait, I don't understand. You know, they don't see a needle, so that keeps them calm, you know. Um, yeah. And there's people who are uh, not accustomed to using insulin, not accustomed to seeing needles. And these are the people who might be helping you when you need help. Correct. The fact that there's no mixing, there's nothing additional you have to do mm-hmm. um, to utilize this. Like, you know, it's just pull it off, stick it in the right part of the body and click and count to five. That's pretty, I- pretty nice, especially from the fact of, you know, the the age group of people using this is two and up Mm -hmm. correct yeah so when we kind of look at that in terms of training people both trained and untrained if you'll call them um professional versus unprofessional um clinician etc etc it's a great device that you don't have to see anything that's scary well i'll i'll share a story from right after arden was diagnosed we went to the food court and tried to do I think Arden had had diabetes for like six months and everything was going like really well, we thought. And so we got kind of heady and gave her some food court Chinese food. And we got home, put her down for a nap. She was only two. And a little while later, we heard this grunting coming out of her bedroom. And when I went in there, it took me a minute to figure out that she was having a seizure. Mm -hmm. So I picked her up and brought her out to where Kelly was. And we laid her on the floor and I pulled out that red box and I froze. Mm-hmm. I really did. She had only had diabetes for six months. And the extent of what I knew about glucagon back then was that my doctor said, here, take this. You'll never need it. Don't worry. And I thought when I heard that, I was like, well, there's one thing I don't need to know about, right? But you right. really need to know about how to use your glucagon. And yes. uh, I learned it that day. We were very lucky to get Arden out of it with a glucose gel inside of her cheeks. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I was going to say for the life of me, but for her life, I couldn't figure out how to. And that's always a first step, right? The the first step is to try to get some simple sugar 
into the person um, or to be able to take it yourself. But in the case that it's not going to work and you could tell whether it's a finger stick or now, thankfully, we can see information on a CGM, then having Jivo Kypo pen would be a great thing to have with you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely I, I, I like you making that point because, you know, you don't use glucagon every day. It's no. an, it's an emergency situation. And, you know, how do you figure out when that situation is real, especially in the beginning, before you have a lot of context for how quickly blood sugars fall and rise. And you don't really know, you know, in the beginning, you don't really know, like, did a bolus like three hours ago lead to this? Is this, you know, sometimes it feels like it's magical that your blood sugar is dropping and falling. Um, right. So let's talk about that for a couple of minutes. How do I know when to make the decision? What do you tell people? Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> well, again, as I just said, if you have treated with simple sugar and you are following your CGM, or I always recommend trying to also do finger stick because we do know that CGMs can lag a little bit, especially in the low blood sugar range, mm -hmm. um, finger stick to be able to tell whether your glucose is coming back up. And if you are not thinking clearly enough to be able to make sense of your glucose data, then that's a time to use Givo Kypo pen, for right. example, right? Yep. Because if you don't know enough, but you know where this product is, it's better to use it. Um, other, you know, situations for your caregivers or the loved ones who you might have trained to use this product. Obviously, if you won't take something that somebody is offering you, that's the time for them to use this, right? right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, all the symptoms and everything that come with hypoglycemia, some people get very angry and um, combative. Can, and, and combative, right. exactly. And uh, that's don't try to feed somebody, utilize this product. Yeah. <laughs> In a minute, I'm going to share a story that we have from more recently, which my daughter has come on the program and already shared uh, back on another episode, but it, it begs repeating here for this. Uh, but for now, we have people around us, right? So not only do we need to know when to use the glucagon personally, right? If you're a, if you're a, an adult living with type one, or if you're the caregiver of someone like wins that moment and that moment, mm -hmm. you know, if people are incapable of taking things on their own, they're being combative. You know, you have a, you see a super low blood sugar. You test and you see twenty, and they can't drink or help themselves. This is the time, right? It's a, yes. it's an emergency device. I know that's going to be a more difficult thing to decide when you're by yourself. I mm -hmm. think I've taught Arden to err on the side of caution when yes. she's by herself. You know, yes. You know, I said if you feel like you're going away and you can't eat any type of sugar products. And things are getting confusing. You, you need to do it. It's in her bag that she carries with her everywhere. Mm -hmm. I have Jivo Kaipo pen in her side table in her dorm room. Everyone she lives with knows how to use it. Um, the explanation we gave them, and this becomes tricky because they are not diabetes mavens, right? They don't know. No. <laughs> so, so we talked a little bit about, listen, insulin makes Arden's blood sugar go down. She could get confused, pass out, um, you know sweaty, far away look in her face. You know, we, we went through a lot of ideas about how they could notice. We showed them right, how, all the common symptoms. Yeah. We showed her mm -hmm. how, um, we showed them how her, her CGM works. One of the girls in the room follows Arden on a CGM. That's and, great. Yeah. And they know how to use her meter. Now, after so many years of diabetes, why did we go to that much trouble? Well, you know, it's because Arden had a seizure a couple of months ago before she left for college. Mm -hmm. So she's told the story on the podcast somewhere else. Um, but I'm going to tell it to you in, in a brief way because I'm really good at using insulin. And mm -hmm. so is Arden. And Arden uses an algorithm that tries to help her from getting low. And she hasn't been low like that since she was three years old. Mm -hmm. But it still happened. And we weren't home. My wife and I were actually at my son's college graduation, of all things. My my daughter couldn't come with us because she had her prom. Mm -hmm. So a full day of activities, not a lot of food. I think they ate a meal at like 3 a.m. I don't think it was exactly good food that they had at 3 a.m. Her blood sugars looked terrific all day. If at 2 o'clock in the morning you would have said to me, Arden's going to get severely low four hours from now, I would not have believed it. Right. I just wouldn't have. 
from looking at the data the way that it was and how everything had been trending thus far, you wouldn't have expected it. But there are probably a lot of variables in the picture. Well, what ended up happening was she had a meal about an hour after I finally went to sleep. She bolused not a lot. She knew not to give herself much, but it was just it was just too much. Mm-hmm. So CGM beeps. My wife wakes me up. I call Arden on the phone. Hey, Arden, your blood sugar's low. Drink a juice. No, no different than any other time. She said, okay. She drank the juice. I know she drank the juice. I said, okay, go back to bed. And then I started getting ready for my day. And just a few minutes before it was time for me to get in the shower, keeping in mind we're going to my son's college graduation, um, <laughs> I think to myself, let me just look at Arden's blood sugar one more time. Mm-hmm. And I open it up and it just says low. So I call her back real quick and she answers the phone. And I think, oh, great. And she says, hello, but she sounded different. Like her voice right. sounded far away. And I said, Arden, you're low. You're really low. Drink another juice. And she goes, what? And I'm like, Arden, you're really low. Drink another juice. What? And that was it. She kept saying, what? I can't. What? And I know the juice was right next to her. Mm-hmm. So now I, I realize I'm, I'm three hours away. And I know Arden's about to have a seizure. There are three of her friends, lifelong girlfriends, in that living room sleeping around her on the floor. And I don't know what to do. So I scream as loud as I can into the phone. I start yelling the girls' names. Because I tried to get Arden to say their names, but she wouldn't. And she wouldn't. I was like, Arden, who's in the room with you? What? Who's there? Is Olivia there? Say Olivia's name. Nothing. Is Nadia there? Say Nadia's name. Nothing. I knew not to say Sanja's name because she sleeps really heavy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, so I started screaming. And then I heard Nadia stand up and say, what do I do? And I said, try to get her to drink a juice. So I can't see what's happening. Okay, okay. They're opening the juice up. Um, they had switched handbags for the prom, so things were moved around. Then I hear Olivia's voice. What do I do? I said, go to the drawer in the kitchen with all the diabetes supplies. Get Jivo Kaipo pen. It's in a pouch. Rip the pouch open. Be ready, because if this juice doesn't work, you guys are going to administer this glucagon. And she's like, okay, okay, okay. These are girls that have been around her her whole life, and if I wasn't there to talk them through it, I still don't know if they would have been okay. You know? Right. Um, And that's why it it means so much to me to do this and to explain to people that you— you can't just say to somebody, hey, I have diabetes and I might get low, but it probably won't happen. If it does, and hold up the pouch and say, use this, you know. Um, right. You have to really make sure that they understand the significant nature of, Absolutely. of it. You know? Every time I throw one away on expiration and get the new one, I mean, my husband has heard this story so many times. <laughs> like, this is what this is for. It is right here. This is where we keep it. And we've always kept it in the same places. One is in the his side nightstand, and the other one is in the kitchen in the cupboard. Yeah. The one in the kitchen in the cupboard is the one that comes in and out of the house with me uh, whenever I'm going out, you know, biking to the park or biking around town or whatever with my boys. It goes in my backpack. My fourth grader knows exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. I've shown it to him. Um, the little video online that actually shows pop the red cap off, pop, push it in this part of mommy's body, you know. But every time I bring it home, I go over that just as a review. Yeah. Now that the product has changed from that old school Lily kit, right? This one being much simpler, I just go over this is where it is. This is when to use it. Yeah. Well, now, <laughs> so, pr- prior to Jivo Kaipo Ben, did your four year old know how to give you glucagon? Oh, my goodness. No. no. Right. And I would have never expected. I mean, I think that at this point, um, I think, could I have trained my fourth grader on using the old school kit? I could have. Um, they also know the other, you know, really important things 911 dad's number on the phone and our our neighbors are typically on one side or the other usually always home within the daytime at least um i mean they know some of the other really important pieces to do as well but i don't think that i would have ever and i didn't i never trained them using the old kit because it's that's too much for a child of that age in my opinion it's it is i had trouble training adults with it so 
uh, because it's nice to say, I'll be okay. But as an example, during Arden's event, one of her three friends froze. Right. She just froze. If it was just her, she would not have been able to help her. I mean, Mm -hmm. I maybe could have continued to talk her through it, but she was just, it's funny. And of the three of them, that's the one I thought would have been, I have The smartest. Yeah. And I got it. And instead, one of the girls who, you know, has been through some stuff in her life just steeled up and she's like, I got it. So now they're holding the the hypo pen. And I said, uh, they're like, are we going to do this? And I'm like, is she drinking the juice? And she said, yes. And the juice was going in and she was shaking and like elbowing the chair that she was in like wildly. She was scratching herself with her nails from her prom. It was terrible. Um, but she came out of it. She, yeah, she had these big nails. They had, um, she had, uh, rhinestones put on them. like fancy yes. and the rhinestone scratched her arms when she was oh. kind of flailing around so she started to come out of it and we did not have to use the hypo pen but which is great we were we were it was there i mean i'm right. like i'm like open the package this is it if we don't see something in 30 seconds we're doing this right um so you know luckily she came out of it without it but because of gvoke hypo pen i have i have very little doubt that one of those two girls could have done it no trouble at all Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Gvoke shouldn't be used in patients with pheochromocytoma or insulinoma. Visit gvoglucagon.com slash risk. Please stay tuned for more important safety information at the end of this podcast. So then that kind of like brings us to who do you tell? It's not just your son and your husband and your best friend who's going to be with you at your prom. You could be at a job. You could be at school. Like, like how? And then do you tell like you... Listen, from my perspective, Jenny, you tell people. Correct. But do you think people do that? That's a really, it's a good question. I know that my very good friends also knew at least about the old school kit, Mm -hmm. right? They did. They knew about it. Could they have used it? Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, I took it with me to college. In fact, I had one in my backpack. I had one that stayed in my dorm room. Um, my RA knew about it, knew where it was in my room. Um, my roommates all knew that I had diabetes. Some of them I knew previously, some of them were brand new to me and I just got to know them. Um, but I don't know how many people honestly tell people I would guess that more kids and teens their parents tell a lot of people about using it, whether it's the school or their coaches or their PE teacher, um, their kids' best friends that they're going to go over and have a sleepover or birthday party at. Um, But I think that if I had to estimate the number of people that may not tell enough people about it, are adults. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Like not wanting to tell people at work that you have diabetes even. Correct. Somebody's got to know, you know. Right, right, right. I mean, I've had jobs in the past where I did not work within this field, mm-hmm. right? You know, going to college and whatnot. I mean, my my job in high school, I worked at a, <laughs> if you believe this or not, worked at an ice cream and candy shop. <laughs> Great place, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Did I, I, I did bring my kit to work with me. My mm. boss did know that I had it. Um, but I don't know that I reviewed that more than one time in the whole number of years that I worked right. there. Yeah. Right. Um, so, well, I, I, so I'm here to say, I hope you tell people, I hope yes. that you get Givo hypo pen. It's, you know, like we said, the form factor, it's easy to carry. Um, tell people. You, you know, yes. pick, please pick somebody you trust at work or at school or a teacher and make sure they know, make sure, um, I think at high school, like for example, or, or in grade school, people throughout the building, we want people throughout the building to know, not just one person that, you know, you may or may not be with at the time. Correct. Absolutely. And that may be, you know, in, in grade school, middle school, you may only have a couple of people to talk to about it. But once you get to that high school age, and or college, those are, that's a lot of people moving around room to room, classroom to classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, in college, I remember talking to each professor each semester. 
and telling them, you know, I might be eating in class because of this, or if this happens, obviously, you know, call emergency and I have this thing I carry around in my backpack. (laughs) This is what this is for. (laughs) So, you know, it occurs to me while we're talking, I bet you most people don't even know the process that happens after you inject the glucagon. Do you think they think that what's in the pen makes your blood sugar go up? Because Mm. what really happens? Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's actually interesting um, consideration because I think most people probably do think that that's just, it's almost, I would, I guess people might think that it's sort of like sugar just being pushed into the body, right? Right. But to, will you share with people what it's actually doing? Yeah. Essentially, it's allowing your body um, to push out its stored glucose sources into the body, mm-hmm. right? It's it's creating enough um, oomph to actually bring out what your, what a normal body would typically do that, that pump and flow kind of between insulin and glucagon in the body right. that helps to keep your blood sugar where it's supposed to go. Okay. Um, so this actually helps to increase um, that delivery into the body and brings blood sugar up very quickly, um, which is lovely. If I had two hypopens and I injected it into someone who was having a seizure or unconscious, how long do I wait before I think, should I do it again? And is doing it again the right thing to do? I mean, by then we've called 911 and everything, but how many times can you do it? By then, and I know the the typical is twice, right? Mm-hmm. So if once has not worked, that's why you get two hypopens. Right. At a time when you get a prescription. Yeah. When you get a prescription. Um, so if obviously it's also the reason that you call medical as soon as the first one is given, you call 911 right away. Um, And if the person does not come around within about 15 minutes, then we do a second injection of GVOC hypopen. So there it is, right? We're in an emergency situation. If people can try sugary snacks or something, they can. I want to mention here not to force food into someone's mouth who's having a seizure because they could aspirate, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, glucose gel in the cheek, you know, but if you're trying to squirt, you know, juice into someone's mouth and it's running out the corners, you're going to choke them. You're not going to help them. Um, No, right. No, that is not going to help them. So we, so we've used Givocipo pen and there's some steps to take, right? We're going to call 911 right, right away, but the person needs to be rolled onto their side. Correct. Okay. Because, because the, because they may vomit after the GVOC has been delivered. Um, essentially, th- it may cause some vomiting after blood sugar levels start to rise. Mm-hmm. And so you want to turn them on their side so that they don't essentially aspirate. Okay. And even if GVOC hypopen helps the patient to wake up, we're still going to call for 911. We still always just deliver it and call 911. Okay. That's what I've always told everybody, including my husband. <laughs> Do we call our doctor afterwards and let them know this happened? Yes, absolutely. Because either it was a one time and you, you know, in your example with Arden, you know, some of the variables that went into that, right? You have an idea that her doses are 99.9% of the time. They're right. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. However, it's important to let your physician know because they can also assess the data and help to evaluate and see, well, maybe there are some trends that you haven't seen yourself, and maybe some dose adjustment needs to be made. Mm -hmm. And if so, they're the ones to help you with that. So afterwards, and someone wakes back up, does its job, you're awake again, you need to eat. Now, Arden's thing, like I said, even though in my heart it felt like it took 20 minutes, it was only a, a couple of minutes the entire thing. And finally, one of her other friends woke up and I was like, go get her some bread, something, you know, to eat, like Mm -hmm. they'll sit in her stomach because she had had a couple of juices by then. And, um, and then it was actually very funny because I'm, I I know in the moment it wasn't funny, but going back later, the one girl's like rooting around in the refrigerator and I hear Olivia go, why are you in the refrigerator? You know, they have a bread drawer. We've been coming to this house for 10 years. Why are you <laughs> looking for the bread in the refrigerator? She's like, I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm up. She was just flustered. 
She's like, we keep the bread in the refrigerator at home so I can hear all this happening. Arden's, right. Arden's waking up. She's making sense. You know, everything is okay. Um, but yeah, we got solid food into her after that. Right. And I think an important piece to put in as well is that one low, especially a, a, a serious low such as this one, another piece to teach is that another low could come if you're not careful, you know, within a couple of hours or within the same day, it's very common to have a significant low and then potentially have another significant low. Mm -hmm. So it's really important, you know, that you kind of lay low, right? Don't go out for a a 10 mile run four hours later. (laughs) Um, Maybe the rest of the day. Yes. The rest of the day is about relaxing. Well, that's what the girls did. So they had been asleep for two hours. Right. In the last 24 hours and they couldn't, they were all jacked up and they couldn't go back to sleep. So they just stayed awake. And, um, it was, it was, um, I'm not going to lie. Like it it took Arden a couple of days to bounce back from it. Psychologically, it was, it was difficult for her. I'm sure it was. Absolutely. Um, so I think you just need to, you need to be ready. You need to know what to do. The people around you need to know what to do. And that's why we're doing this about storing Jivo Kaipo pen. Store in a sealed original foil pouch until time of use. So the pen I'm holding here would come in a pouch, and the pouch actually has directions on it. And they're really does. And they're good. I have them here in front of me somewhere. Do you have them too? I do. The picture is very clear, which is wonderful to see um, and very simple. And there's not a lot of like intricate detail (laughs) that makes it like you need a magnifying glass to read it. But yes, the directions are right on the package, which makes it nice for somebody. You know, even though you're not going to see a needle or anything Mm -hmm. like the older kit, um, and you may have instructed caregivers or loved ones already, in that moment, it's nice to have a visual of, oh, yes, I remember. I do this picture. I do this picture and this. It's it's nice. I'm looking at it right here. It's simple. It says, number one, Mm -hmm. prepare. Tear open pouch on dotted line. Remove auto injector. Pull off red cap. Choose injection site and expose the skin, push down on skin to start, hold down for five seconds. Then the window turns red, turn the person on their side, call 911. And Correct. If, yeah. And I think you 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 said something really important there. Expose the skin. You do not want to inject this through clothing. Mm, okay. Expose the skin, pull the clothes away. If you have to pull somebody's pants down or pull their shirt up or whatever it is, this is necessary. Do not put it through the clothing. I appreciate you saying that. Yes. More about storage information. So it stays in the foil pouch till time of use, stored at room temperature between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And you do not refrigerate it or freeze it. Correct. Just shelf stable. Just self, st- just shelf stable. There's great, <laughs> just, what did I just say? Just shelf stable. Is that what I tried to say? Yes. That did it not is. come out, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Givoke is a prescription injection for the treatment of very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages 2 and above. Do not use if you have a specific type of adrenal or pancreatic tumor, starvation, chronic low blood sugar, or allergy to Givoke. High blood pressure, hypoglycemia, and serious skin rash can occur. Call your doctor or get medical help right away if you have a serious allergic reaction, including rash, difficulty breathing, or low blood pressure. Visit GivoGlucagon.com slash risk for more information. There's great information about Givoke Hypopen online. Yes. So uh, GivoGlucagon.com, uh, you can use my link, GivoGlucagon.com forward slash juice box, GivoGlucagon.com forward slash risk, all kinds of information. And throughout this episode, I'm going to put put some of that safety information in here so people can, can hear it as they're going. And there's... A wonderful video online. Just the intro video is super easy to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you physically want to, because the package is not, um, the package isn't clear, even though it shows you a picture of what it looks like. I think it's nice to see it being held in a hand, yes. what it actually looks like and go through the actual process. Um, so it may be even something that you utilize. Um, I, I've had a couple of parents who've kind of used the video in school teaching just oh. to show, well, that's a good which idea. makes yeah, it makes it very visual um, when they can't have an open package because okay. obviously you want to store it in the package. You know what? After you leave me, I'm going to, at the end of this episode, I'll record 
um, a list of hypoglycemia symptoms. So that awesome. in case you're not in case you're listening and you're not sure, I'll go through a bunch of them for you so you can hear them there. That would be great. Well, Jennifer, have we done it? I think we've done it. Yes. We're so good at this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we've <laughs> we've talked often enough over the past couple of years that hopefully we would have covered things sufficiently. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate you doing this with me very much. Because of course. It's just like I said, I I I didn't want to bring it up during the during this. Because it's your private stuff, but I know you've had like a low blood sugar, like through your life, and you've shared them on the yes. podcast before. Um, and the story you tell about were you pregnant, holding a younger child or something in a store? It's frightening to me. Oh, yeah, you know, because you're because you're you're so good at this, and, and <laughs> you know what I mean. Like that's the that's the thing. I I guess I want to say to people, and and I'll I'll share this before we go. When I used to have to go into school every year and explain diabetes to Arden's teachers, I would tell them, I'm not here explaining to you everything that could go wrong because it's definitely going to go wrong. Right. But it probably is. And when that time comes, I don't need you pulling out a piece of paper going, uh, what do I do? What do I do? I want you to, right. I want you to react. Maybe it'll never happen, but I don't know. Right. You know. And if it does, then at least you have a plan and you've gone over it enough times that it's almost a second nature, even if you've never used Jivoke Hypopen before. You've gone over it enough that it becomes something that you plan to use, even if you never do. Yep. Jenny, thank you so much for doing this. I will, of course. Uh, I'll see you soon. Sounds great. Bye. Before we go, here are some early symptoms of hypoglycemia. Okay, some early symptoms of hypoglycemia, which of course is low blood sugar, include sweating, drowsiness, dizziness, sleep disturbance, palpitations, anxiety, tremors, blurred vision, hunger, slurred speech, depressed mood, tingling in the hands, feet, lips, or tongue, irritability, lightheadedness, abnormal behavior, inability to concentrate, unsteady movement, headache, or personality changes. If left untreated, these symptoms may progress to confusion, seizures, unconsciousness, and even death. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast.